Hey everyone, welcome to Obscure Sleeper Presents. And welcome to the 10th episode! Uh, it seems like only four months ago I was making episode one. Razor Sharp is a movie written by, directed, and starring Troy and Ashford. The release date for this movie is 2001, but the credits listed as copyright 1998. Why no one jumped at the chance to distribute this for three years is beyond me. It's basically an excuse to show off Ashford's martial arts skills, and if there's anything I know for certain, it's that if you can do martial arts, you can direct a film. According to the back of the box, Sharp is a story of Justin Sharp, a struggling actor who, in his quest to become a successful martial arts action star, is hired to act in what is thought to be a low-budget film, but it turns out to be a murder-slash-robbery. Never have I heard a summary so apropos, though if you go by the cover art, you'd think that this movie was about Zordon. Rangers, you're in terrible danger! The day I feared has come! Whatever you do, don't watch a film called Razor Sharp! Um, cause it'll be really bad. I mean, what was going on with the cover? Who the fuck did that? It's like someone did me on the cover and just put lightning bolts and shit on it. Would someone please scratch my nose? <laughs> why the strange floating head above the random ass lightning? And why are his eyes green? Is he hulking out? And oh yes, his vengeance is cutting edge. Combine that with the pun in the title and the wit really is razor sharp. The movie begins with a quote by Troy and Ashford himself. Our destiny is not by chance. It's by choice. First of all, this movie is about a global martial artist who's duped into a crime. Second of all, you don't choose destiny. It's destined to happen. It's the root word. I made my choice. The saga begins. Ah yes, my list of most memorable sagas would have to be Lord of the Rings, The Odyssey, and Razor Sharp. Oh, sorry guys, I didn't realize I put in my old theater tapes. Let me just... what? Ah. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm being told by my invisible producer that that's actually the movie. Justin is filming a fight scene for a movie, apparently about ninjas in bright colored tracksuits and guys with big turtlenecks. For the next martial arts sensation, you'd think Mr. Ashford would be able to choreograph a fight scene. Remember to fight one at a time! Now don't get up. That would only make sense. What the hell do you think you're doing?! Just giving you an unnecessary close-up. The unnecessary close-up guy is Rick Cooper, another martial artist who gets pissy because he thinks Sharp is making him look bad. Trust me, he isn't. So Cooper tells this random guy on the set to fire him. You will fire him in front of everyone on this fucking set! Yeah, all three of them. And then he looks at the camera and walks away. I think this next part wasn't even in the script. I think Ashford's crew just decided to mutiny one day. It's not what you're doing. You're doing great. You look great, man. I love what you're doing. Well, then, why am I getting fired? I mean, what? What's it's just not going to work out. I, I, it's not going to work out. This is bullshit! Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, well, thank goodness they showed him walking to his car and driving away, or I wouldn't be sure he left. Oh, look, the opening credits. In the movie so far, Justin has gotten fired, put on a ridiculous sized t shirt, and drove away. Well, I'm intrigued. And if you'd love to see two minutes of the same shot of Troy Ashford swinging the sword, then you'd love the opening credits. Justin comes home to his comic relief roommate. Don't worry, you'll have time to not laugh later. I mean, director fired me in front of everybody. And by everybody, I mean nobody. They get into an argument about why he was fired. Rick Cooper's ego is bigger than my dick, and you know how big that is. Whoa, I do not need to know what you two do in your spare time. Justin is fired by his agent, and this being a vanity film, they decide to throw in this scene. It's pointless padding scene time. Bing! Double whammy! See you. All right, man. See you when you get back. Yep, he's just enjoying his new bracelets and his coke in his tiny striped tank top. He gets a phone call and then sashays away in his skirt pants. It turns out the call was from Rick Cooper's girlfriend, Daria, who wants to meet with him. Yeah, that's practical wear. 
I can't imagine you made the costuming decisions here. I want you to know I thought you were great out there. I'm no expert, but you did some things out there I hadn't seen before. Really? Because it sure looked like a generic fight scene to me. Plenty that's better left unseen. Sorry? Forget it. Who's doing the film? Sorry, I didn't mean that. Would be so Dario one. wants to help him get back into the scene because, I don't know, he has skills or something. In case you didn't have the keen eye to notice the boom mic floating around during that entire scene, I want you to keep close watch on this next part. There's something off about it, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Let's go. So, did you set it up? Yeah, I did. Rick told me to give you this. I don't know. Maybe it's the different vehicle. Maybe it's the fact that she's in a completely different outfit. Maybe it's because this movie was put together by a blind koala bear. Who knows? Who needs continuity? What was he doing to her anyway? Chloroforming her? Would it have been that hard to get him a rag or something? Shit, there ain't no feature, but... Never can tell, you know, maybe somebody see me. What do you think? Yeah, the director's mother. She'll see you. She probably won't even rent it. So what, they only own a couch, a TV, and some bits of string on the shelf there? That's cause I don't have a job, don't want no job like you. And I don't lay on the couch with pajamas on, I sleep naked. So he clearly has pants on. And it's not even like that was an editing goof, they meant for it to be that way, and that makes even less sense. Do you remember Rosa? She was a go one one. You lasted all night, man. I love you, man. Boo! Justin meets with the crew of his newest project, and for some reason doesn't see anything strange with not having any cameras, script, or rehearsals. Huh. Guess that would make filming a scene kind of difficult. Justin gets an explanation about how the scene is going to go, although to be honest, it was a little hard to tell what was being said since Troy Ashford doesn't know what looping is. Now keep the gun out of the closest guy's hand, and then do likewise to the other. Actually, no, I want you to just kick their hands. It's a trap. I know you're going to okay, be doing okay. it hard, so don't worry Good. about it. I want you to be realistic looking. At that point, I'm going to give you the gun. Okay, and the suspicious at all. Don't worry about the cameras. I'm going to be taking care of everything. I'm going to be behind you the whole time. All right, sounds like a plan. I'm not a criminal or anything, but if I was, I probably wouldn't walk around with a big gun in public. It might give me away. Here, so Justin takes the briefcase, and the whole thing is filmed as blackmail. Oh wow, those guns are fake. It turns out the briefcase belonged to a member of the Mafia called Watson, dressed here like the Joker. What the fuck happened here? I love this guy. I'm not sure what he was going for. He's some sort of strange amalgam of a gay British man and someone of ambiguous origin. Who stole my money? God damn it, Hespo! Well, I'm not going to pay that dickhead's hospital bills. You find these fuckers, Hespo, and you bring them to me. No one steals my money and lives to spend it. Go! Go! Justin is kidnapped by the people who set him up and offered to join them or have the tape leaked. And of course they conveniently leave him with the two stupid toadies and he gets away. There's a cutscene of a couple of cops investigating the murders and then we get back to this. I don't know how he got away. You make a martial arts vanity film and you're not even going to show yourself beating up the guys to get away? It's not like you have a lot else going for you here, buddy. The toady guys go looking for Justin and beat up his roommate. Unfortunately for us, they don't kill him. The lead toady, Carlos, goes to see the yeah, boss, and we get the big reveal as to who's behind this scheme. Oh, it's Rick Cooper. What a surprise. Justin goes to Dario's house to ask for her help, only to find her dead. How exactly he knew where Rick's girlfriend lived is a question they never really answer. But oh well. I'm glad we spent some time getting to know her character. Upon exiting, Justin is attacked by some more thugs. I love how he tries to walk away casually, like they didn't see him or something. Where are you going, Mr. Sharp? That punch definitely hit him. Oh no, they're LARPing! The next scene takes place in the saddest strip club you've ever seen. What, is she playing DDR? I've seen some sad film credits, but if you're the stripper in Razor Sharp, you never had much hope for your career, did you? Of course, when you're in a movie where the credits look like this, you probably didn't want that career anyway. The strip club must be where Watson is hanging out, otherwise I'm not really sure why that shot was there. Either way, Cooper sends him the tape and he watches it with his snazzy tie and his man slave, who I believe is named Esbo? I'm going to kill them. And anyone they ever fucking spoke to. As for our friend, the Karate Kid here, turn him into a human piñata. I'm not sure where I'm from exactly, but I love to overact. For some reason, Justin is back at Daria's house. 
Why he left in the first place, I don't know. Daria's sister Diana shows up, and for some unexplained reason, Justin takes her with him. This lady is the worst actor in the film. Rag on Watson for his overacting gayness, but at least he has a method. I'm trying to find something that your sister left here for you. Shit. What was that? How does he know her? Does she even know what's going on? Did she not notice her dead sister in the living room, lying around? The two of them go to Justin's house to find some weapons. I'm coming! I'm coming! Strangely enough, a couple of Watson's thugs already stole some of his weapons for no reason in particular, since they just wait around for them to show up anyway. Ugh, he got it between my fingers. And hey, Ashford actually does some martial arts. Come on, if you borrow your car, do you? No. Well, that was nice of him. Meanwhile, Watson and Esbo have a nice romantic moment. I'll give you the highlights of the scene. I love it! They're allowed to break every bone in his body but his neck. They're saving that one for, um, for you. Who's as good to me as you, Espo? Oh, by the by, if we ever have a breakdown in security as we did yesterday, I'm going to have to kill you. As if we needed more characters, the two cops are still on the case. And of course they're eating donuts. Way to break the mold, Troy. The fuck is this? Diana and Justin hole up for the yeah, night, and we learn about Justin's past. His boring, cliched past. Ended up with the wrong. Look how bored she looks. This is the audience right now. Diana is the audience. Okay, I guess we don't need any lead up for this. Or chemistry. Hey, um, remember her dead sister? You're not gonna mention that? Oh, okay, I guess they abandoned the sex scene after all. If only we were so lucky later in the movie. Why do they have to show everyone pulling up in their cars? We don't need to see them driving up to know they just got there. The two cops show up to interrogate Watson. Detective, I can't believe that you would barge into my home. Detective, I can't believe how many accents I'm trying to pull off. Did he just steal some ice cubes? This makes Watson none too happy. Then we cut to Justin and Daria, and I have no idea where they are or what they're doing. Good luck trying to figure it out. She's fighting a bunch of shirtless guys, okay. Justin parks his car, I guess. Holy shit, why does that guy have a rocket launcher? I could choreograph a fight scene better than this. takes to the water and Justin knocks one of the guys down so hard that he loses his shirt in the process. D Daria. What? It's pointless padding scene time? Bing! Then the two have awkward sex. Justin decides to go to the police to explain what happened, and Diana points out the logical inconsistencies of the entire film. Maybe they'll understand. Yes, officer, I know there are no cameras other than a camcorder. Yes, I thought it was a movie. I'm really sorry about shooting those two men. Can I go now? I'm glad they shot that at the worst angle possible. There's also some mobster guy named Steve Watson after us as well. Steve Watson? I mean, I think that's his name. Great. I finally found a decent guy, and by the afternoon, he's gonna be Please. fish food. Please stop trying hey, to act. I like fish. We owed him money last year, and he almost got shot over $5,000. And he almost 
$5,000! From what we can make out from the poor delivery of this dialogue, we discover that Rick has a gambling problem, and that's why he knew about the drop earlier in the film. I think I finally got something on Mr. Rick Cooper. Justin stops by Daria's grave on the way. Uh, why does she already have a grave? Oh, what is this? You can clearly see someone else's name on the tombstone. And wait! It moves when he gets up! Then some ninjas with guns show up. I guess they didn't understand that they don't blend in very well out in the open in the middle of the day. Wait a second, what just exploded? God damn it, Espo, that's it! Fucking karate guy is going to handle another fucking karate guy! Aw, lover's tiff. Justin goes to Watson's, uh, headquarters to steal some money. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time, Mr. Sharp. What, so they were just walking around in their masks for no reason? Diana's kidnapped and Ashford has an acting gasm. Shit! Cooper tells Sharp to meet him at the studio while Watson listens in fruitily. <laughs> we got them, Espo. Oh, kiss me on the mouth, Espo. And we have an action-packed scene of Justin changing his shirt. It's a trying task. Oh look, his car changed. Couldn't be because he couldn't afford the rental anymore. Justin meets Cooper and a whole slew of thugs. Calm down. No fucking money in the bag! No, no, no! Bet that motherfucker does not leave here alive! You're ruining everything! I'll kill you to death! We had met under different circumstances. I could learn to love you. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! Things are about to get action-packed. I think we need some montage music. Looks like there's gonna be a brawl. You playing something good? Hell yeah! Rolling Stone, street fighting man, G. Stephens! You just hit G8. If you like Pina Colada. I thought this might happen. So I invited some friends of mine along to act as impersonal arbitrators. He loves his job. Halt! Halt! <laughs> What's happening here? So we went from having no fight scenes at all to having way too many fight scenes all at once. Diana gets away on her own, but being completely incompetent, needs rescuing again. Justin! Justin! Ugh, her Justin! voice. Hey, let's see Justin hit some women. Well, now that the preliminaries are over, we can get to the main event. You're... 18 minutes too late, buddy. Why did you do this to me? I'll tell you why. You come, you try and take over my movie. You didn't know your place. I thought I'd show it to you. So, you're jealous of another martial artist who's working on a movie with you and might be slightly better. So you frame him for murder and hire an army of guys to battle him? Don't you think you're overreacting just a little bit? You think you can deal with me, Sharp? You've never fucking dealt with anybody like me before. <laughs> That's why I had you fired. And rehired and fired again! Oh, please shut up. Mr. Shaw, how you doing? This movie is taking forever! Watson was killed off screen in what I can only assume was a moment of passion, and Esbo is our final boss. I know, I was let down too. He kills Cooper and, surprise, kidnaps Diana. We've got a minute left of the movie. Let's throw in something completely inappropriate. How about I take all those out, motherfuckers? Oh shit. No. He, ain't, he ain't gonna do it. He ain't gonna do it. He ain't not, he's not gonna do it. Fuck it. The hell are you doing? Okay, guys, final battle. Sharp finally gets revenge on the people who, uh, I guess the police just show up and end it. And then the movie just stops. I guess they ran out of film. So, what did we learn today? Well, if you're a semi-decent martial artist, you should probably leave the movie making to people who actually make movies. The premise behind this movie worked about as well as the Saved by the Bell porno. Well, I couldn't sleep this morning cause the chick I'm with is horny and I don't think that I'll make it on time. The plot didn't work, the writing didn't work, and the acting didn't work. So maybe this wasn't the breakout movie that was supposed to shoot Troy and Ashford to stardom. But I'll tell you what it was, a five dollars horribly spent. And that's for both copies. Well guys, it's been a wonderful ten episodes so far. I want to thank you for watching, and here's the ten- Come on, come on, nothing to see you. Razor sharp, eh? The most riveting independent action film of the year. His vengeance is cutting edge. Unlike this movie, which can barely cut a turd. Huh.
Oh, what the hell? Piece of shit.